Hello everyone, welcome to another TWAB this week. We're going to get right on into it. I don't want to waste too much of your time. So uh, this week at Bungie, Zones. Welcome back to the TWAB. How have you been? It might it might seem a bit odd to ask you that since we are speaking in this medium to a broad audience, but the important thing is we care about you and hope you are doing well. It's another exciting week in the world of Destiny. The story continues to play out through several missions. No spoilers here, but it's been fun watching you experience the story as it unfolds week after week or week over week. This week's Nightfall is a tough one in the Corrupted, but if you rise to the challenge, you have your first shot at earning Horde's Least Pulse Rifle. On the PvP side, this week is your first chance to take advantage of short cooldowns with Solar 3.0 by having fun in Mayhem. Okay. Control those zones. Control is a staple mode in the Crucible. It's a hybrid, it's a hybrid of a traditional deathmatch mode of racking up points by defeating enemies in an objective mode that would where you get points for controlling capture zones. But what if it was indeed all about the zones? I don't know what this entails. I'm going to just click this. Boom. It's about the zones. Hilarious. As we teased out in a previous TWAB, zone control will become available in Crucible Lab starting next week. It's going to stick around for the rest of the season of The Haunted, except for during Iron Banner. Some of you may remember zone control from back in the OG Destiny time frame. This mode is more of a traditional objective mode where the only way to score points is to control those zones. It's a simple premise, but there are a few things you should know to help your fire teams to be more successful and strategic. Stacking players on the zones is going to capture them far quicker than trying to do a solo. It could be a little easier to slip one player behind enemy lines to try to take a zone, but they are going to have to pull some heroics for longer periods of time. Controlling an area or and being able to safely gather three or more guardians is the most efficient way to cap a zone. Just watch out for a well-placed Nova Bomb. Capture times. One guardian, 22.5 seconds. Two guardians, 10 seconds. Three guardians plus 7.5 seconds. The initial capture is going to give you one point, and you will get two, two points for every 15 seconds you hold a zone after that. So keeping a zone has more value than initially capturing it. The first team to 125 points wins. If a team falls too far behind and we detect that even if they held two zones for the rest of the match, they wouldn't get enough points to catch up. A mercy rule will come into effect. Those are the basics. We will be monitoring the conversation and looking forward to all the feedback you provide on how this mode plays in Destiny 2. Speaking of controlling zones, tomorrow Trials of Osiris will feature the zone capture variant. It will, it will also be a Trials rank bonus weekend, so jump in and make State 14 proud. That's actually really unfortunate. Never really was a big fan of uh capture zone trials but i think that the mode is going to be a lot of fun i think it's going to be very interesting um i don't know how much i'll play it because i really like playing control for kills and stuff which i mean you can still do that in the new mode but and people will just be playing the zones more so i don't know might give it a shot might not i it seems interesting to me so pride strike team hi friends we are back this week with our next installment from the pride strike team the history of pride at bungie Back at the back in the before times, Bungie sponsored the Seattle Pride Parade several years in a row. It started in 2017, shortly after the Bungie Diversity Committee was formed, and we were both a sponsor and participant for that year, 2018 and 2019. We would all, we would have continued into 2020, but the parade was canceled with the start of the pandemic. In 2018, we also released Bungie's first inclusion, diversity, and equal, equ equity pin. Equity, weird. Pin slash emblem combo. The pride pin and true colors emblem as well as a pride, bungee pride t-shirt, where which you can see in the these pictures. In 2019, we collaborated with several other studios to join the parade. With the move to remote work, the next few years were smaller and more focused on digital options. In 2020, we ran an email series that shared stories about celebrations of various awareness months. That series shared stories about historical figures, called out prominent industry figures, pointed out local LGBTQ plus owned businesses, and closed with a call to action to focus on what people can do to help beyond simple awareness. We also had a movie night featuring the critically acclaimed movie, Moonlight. This was relatively low-key compared to participation in the Pride, uh, Pride Parade, but at the same time, some extremely exciting conversations were sparkled, or sparkled, were sparked that would lead to the formation of Trans at Bungie later that year. And the emblem code is back. Very nice emblem. If you don't have it, I would recommend getting it. It is very nice, and it's for a good cause as well, so... Definitely definitely worth picking up, in my opinion. 2021's June was similar. When Pride was driven by Trains at Bungie, we delivered an email series featuring employees shared their stories, a codenames game night, and another movie night. This time featuring Saving Face, this year was also the first time we had a major Pride-related push. 
outside of June. To quote a friend on the Pride team, Strike Team, we're not gay just one month, just one month of the year. In November of twenty, uh, in November of twenty twenty one, we released Bungie's first free ID and A, ID and E related emblem, Be True. Additionally, we had one of the first in-game messages celebrating the new emblem and communicating our stance, supporting the trans community. We've heard from how big a positive impact these efforts made, and we continue to we continue to every week. Thank you for that. We also want to call out the charitable impacts we've made, summing up everything we've made as of May 31st, 2022. From the Pride pin, it's just shy of four, 480000 that's all thanks to the efforts of the team to create this initiative, an amazing community we have that supports our beliefs. If you haven't checked out our new Pride emblem, you can read more about the, that in this swab. Beyond that, we've got some fun plans coming in the future of celebrating Pride at Bungie. We can't we can't quite speak of them yet, but we promise they will be colorful. XOXO, Bungie Pride Strike Team. Player support report. All the resolved issues. Another week, another patch. That is four in a row if you're keeping count. And you know who is keeping count? Our player support team. They're keeping a close eye on what ongoing issues and are active and are here to keep you up into speed on what we are currently tracking. This is their report. 4.1.0.3 resolved issues. Earlier this week, hotfix 4.1.0.3 was released to the world. Below is a list of some of the issues that resolved with this hotfix. The ornament, I'm not even going to try it. The ornament for Celestial Nighthawk was unavailable to equip. Some players were missing Void and Arc subclass unlocks. And players could not use Armor Synth. Airborne effectiveness issue. We are currently investigating an issue where some exotic armor pieces are not granting the advertised airborne effectiveness that correctly when equipped. The affected armor pieces are as follows. Sealed Aham Karagrath, Line Rampant, Peacekeepers, Parent Grinds, Wings of Sacred Dawn. This is working correctly but does state in the description that the bonus is only active with the Tome of Dawn aspect equipped. GCX emblem distribution. Players who have donated towards the GCX celebration should expect all donation emblems to be distributed around the week of June 27th, 2022. Known issues. Please note that the flawless Thought Stealer Triumph requires players to complete all encounters in the duality dungeon without any fire team, any members of the fire team dying. The tears of, I mean, that this one is really not that hard to do. Just do it solo and flawless. I mean, really, I did it and I'm bad at the game, so it's not that hard. The Tears of Con Contrition Scout Rifle displays the correct incorrect magazine options for shaping the weapon at the at the relic and often shape and upon shaping it it is displayed incorrectly. The Without Remorse shotgun does not appear in collections. The Conflux Legend Lost Sector requires the Rift Legend Lost Sector to be unlocked. The Leviathan Destination Weekly Challenge does not progress for some players. Certain weapon damage buffs are not functioning correctly in PvP, including the will given form buff from the Agar Scepter Catalyst. For a full list of emergent issues in Destiny 2, players can review our known issues article. Players who observe other issues should report them to the help forum. And now we have our movies of the week. And our art of the week. That sword is so cool. Good job on his part. Very nice art. Let's go, boys. I really like that one. That's really cool. But don't forget to tag us in your creations when that inspiration hits you. Be sure to use art of the week movie of the week and destiny 2 art to make sure nothing is missed i know it was pretty light swab this week they tend to slim down a bit deeper into the season we did want to point out a great behind the scenes exploration of how our audio team designs all the sounds you find in the worlds of destiny go give it a read if you haven't already and let us know what you think we're hoping to take a few of these deeper dives into various teams at bungie in the future have a great friday tomorrow and a great weekend cosmo very very light swab not even that much to read. I think the most interesting part is that we're getting a new Crucible mode. But very, very boring TWAB, none to say the least. Um, but that's really all that I have for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video and this, today's TWAB. Um, that's really all there is to it. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.